everybody, Julie Murphy here. 25 years plus is being a financial planner and I've learned a couple things along the way that I would like to pass on to you. So please hit the subscribe button, like and notification bell. Why? Because I want to make sure we're getting you to a life that you love because we either work things out or we act it out and we do it through our money, through our health and through our relationships. So it's time for us to get out of these suffering patterns and start to build those financial muscles or those relationship muscles or health muscles in a different way. And you'll notice on my channel that not only do I talk about money, but I bring in experts in these other areas. But today what we're going to talk about is how do you as a parent, an awesome aunt and uncle or a godparent or just a mentor um, to the young ones today. Um, how do we help them build that muscle so that they have a different launch pad that was a little bit better than the one that you had? Because when you're building your financial muscles yourself, then how do you then positively impact them? So I'm going to share some tips and tools that not only have I used with clients through the years, but I've also used with my own children. And you'll see that I have a couple of videos with my kids because they come and talk about it, what's real for them. So how do you help little kids or even adult children build that financial muscle? Well, the biggest thing that I can say is you need to have skin in the game. Why? I always say this. Um, think about it like from a college funding perspective. I remember when I was in college, I was floored. Remember, I am one of 12 children. So I paid my own way through school. So I had no idea what it meant to have money in abundance because there was always a scarcity of money. And these kids on my dorm floor would just get like a thousand dollars a month deposited in their checking account. And I was like, how does that work? Like, really? And you know, whether you have too little or you have enough or you're in between, that's irrelevant because that's not your money, that's the parents' money. And the parents have learned to build that financial muscle based on their life experience. This is why statistics show that it's over 82% of the time when you have family wealth, so you have all this wealth that was generated from a business owner or something, by the time it hits the fourth generation, all the wealth, over 82% of the time, that money is completely defunct. The business is gone, defunct. And why is that? I have learned over all these years of being a professional financial planner that those other generations did not go through the same experiences that that original entrepreneur went through to build the muscles, to be the cash flow manager they are, the risk manager that they are in how they do that. So the trick is, how do you then build the muscle? And then I also learned, I had this friend in college where um, it was really interesting to me. He came from an extremely wealthy family, but he was taught how to build the muscle. So usually you see where, you know, that muscle is not built because the parents are just providing and they're not necessarily teaching. So how, how do we teach how do we take those tips and tools that whether you have a lot of money or you don't have a lot of money, that you're helping that next generation build those muscles? So like I said, the first thing is that I want to make sure that they have skin in the game. When it comes to college planning, one of the best pieces that I've seen to have your kids um, go to college and where they choose is I had one client who had decided, hey, I'll match any amount of money that you decide to put in. So one kid decided to get a music scholarship because they played the cello. Another kid actually was a Boy Scout and decided to get his Eagle Scout. And the parents matched the money. Now, the oldest, um, actually, they, they, they matched. They paid the same thing that the Eagle Scout paid. Then the other child actually did so well in the cello and then just decided to get their graduate degree, their master's, by staying in the school symphony and then got her Ph.D., and so the parents today will be like, oh, we paid through the nose. But guess what? She came out with her PhD at 26 years old and we only paid half. Like they were okay with that because the kid had some kind of skin in the game. And those children today as adults in their late 30s, they actually 
are amazing cash flow managers for their own. Now, there's other ways that you could get your kids to have skin in the game with college. That was just one example. Another example is um, sometimes parents say, okay, well, what decision you make? You, you help them learn of how are you going to pay the loans back? How are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? And I've had parents say that, okay, depending on your grades, I'll pay X amount. So that's skin in the game. So you produce, you get something. Not just that, you just get it. It kind of reminds me of back in the day, I saw an interview by Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley in basketball. And um, I remember Oprah asking them, so what do you think about the young kids in the NBA today? And Charles Barkley was like, don't get MJ started. And what was he talking about there? Well, <laughs> um, Michael, ja Michael Jordan said, uh, you know what? Um, I had to earn my Nike sponsorship. And the challenge with NBA players today is that they get those scholarships or those sponsorships before they even get to the NBA. And that is where there's not skin in the game. So you have a different input and a different expectation. So if you really want to help these kids build their muscles, they have to have their own skin in the game. So you can do it in different ways. Um, you can also decide that you as a parent, and I'm going to just use college funding as another example. You can decide that you will um, match anything that they put away. Like this can work for college funding. This can work for just savings. I know recently, over the last couple of years, um, you know, I was raised Irish Catholic and my kids, they made their first communion. And so um, with their communion money, I said, okay, I did this exact same thing with my um, clients as I did with my children. And I said, okay, I want you to take half of this newfound money. It's money that they didn't have before. And I want you to put it in an account that we're going to build your wealth with. And I'm going to teach you. So I had them put some of it in a savings account for just building up some cash. So if they ever needed it, and then also some into a stock account. And so how do you help the kid build a muscle? Now you may be a person that doesn't necessarily know how to, you know, I know how to look at stocks. I'm a licensed stockbroker, but um, you may not be as comfortable with that, but you could talk to your financial advisor or you could, um, there's online resources that you could look at to decide, or you could even choose um, some investment that you know that you have um, that works. But what I thought was really important is that my kids had skin in the game of, I want you to learn off of things that, you know, I always heard the uh, the adage of you should only invest in things that you know about if you're being like the stock picker. And that may or may not work for you. That's definitely not my recommendation for everybody. But what I'm saying is for me and my children, what I did is I'm like, well, tell me where you'd want to put this. And my son's first answer was, how about Transformers, mom? Because in second grade, he really liked Transformers. And I was like, I don't even know which toy company makes Transformers, but let's look it up. So we looked it up and it was Hasbro. So guess what? He's got a Hasbro stock, you know? And he's like, oh, that's my Transformers. Like I invest. And it was really funny. What are the other ones that he decided? You know, we got Starbucks, we got Target, we got Disney, all the ones that my kid was used to and Whole Foods back in the day. And so um, it was really interesting to watch. Um, I figured out what kind of investor my son is at second grade because he was picking stocks based on how much of a dividend they paid, and which is funny. So some of you that may be going over your head and may not, but um, there's two ways that you make money in investments. One is capital gain, the other is income, and the income is the more conservative side. And I just got to giggle because I know exactly what kind of investor my oldest is now. Um, and then going back to the skin in the game, not only investing in something that they understood, but I made sure they have the app on their phone so that they can look at it. And um, I also um, made sure that I told them, I said, I want my kids to start getting used to company matching money in 401ks way before they're a teenager. Why? Because it's building a muscle. So I told my kids, I go, okay, well, you got all that birthday money. If you want, um, mom will match anything. And they're like, Wait, so if I got $50 for my birthday and if I put the $50 in my stock account, you're going to give me another $50 so I get $100? I go, yep, that's what I'm going to do. And they were like, you're kidding me. So it's very interesting watching 
four of my children do that four different ways because they're four different personalities. But what I'm trying to do with each one of them, that even though one is strong left brain logical, the other one's a creative right brain, and then the other two are a little mix in between, that they honor who they are financially. Because one of the biggest mistakes that we make as adults is that we try to shove people into a pigeonhole of, well, you got to be like this to be financially successful. And that is so not true. The biggest part that I have learned over the time is that if you don't honor who you are in your right brain and your left brain, and we measure that at my wealth management firm of saying, what is your right brain saying? What is your left brain saying? And then we got to get that together and say, okay, this is who you are. And I'm noticing that even with my children. So getting them to build that financial muscle by actually honoring who they are. It's not me as the parent dictating, no, you got to do it like this. No, you have to do it like that. It's like, and I, I know some of you are sitting here saying, Julie, she's a second grader. And I go, I get it. But if they start to trust themselves, that's what the exercise is about. So it's skin in the game and building the muscle to trust themselves financially. I had a call with somebody in the last few weeks that this woman's in her 60s and she still doesn't trust herself with money. And that pattern happened when she was a kid. Because if you've watched all of my other videos, I constantly talk about that we as human beings operate on two operating systems, our conscious mind and our subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is fully developed by the time we're age seven. And again, that research is done by Dr. Bruce Lipton. And, um, he, he's, he's the expert on the biology behind that. And so it's really important for us to understand that as we're helping our children build the muscle, that we're getting them to have skin in the game and to trust themselves. Because then they're building, number three is their inner knowing. Their inner knowing is so important because then they're following their gut, they're trusting it, and then they're having the experiences or the ripple effect of those decisions, because that is what they need to do to build the muscle. It's okay that they fall and get a nosebleed. I remember my mom saying all the time, like, when you have 12 children, you cannot control everything all the time. And my mom would be like, well, they're going to learn from experience. And then I had a mentor of mine say to me, my grandmother, when I was younger, used to say, well, you can either learn from me or you can learn from the experiences of life. The challenge is many of us parents sit there and we just want them to do it our way, but understand you may have a child, whether a young adult or under age 18, that is gonna learn best by their own experience. And sometimes it's our job as parents to actually, or great aunts and uncles or grandparents, to let them get a nosebleed. Because then they'll learn faster and they'll build that muscle faster. It's just that when we intervene in them putting their skin in the game and building the muscle to trust themselves and to develop that inner knowing, this is where they then create more suffering patterns because they haven't built it from the inside out. And I talk about this in my first book called The Emotion Behind Money. And it's about building wealth from your inside out. And so we can actually help children build their wealth from the inside out by helping them have more skin in the game, building their own trust, their own decisions, and build that inner knowing. And that will actually help them build their wealth from the inside out from the rest of their lives. So again, I am here to help. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, the like button and notification bell, and please share this with people because... It is time for all of us to stop living fiscally stressed and fiscally not happy. It is time for financial fun time. And the more we can share this message around, the more we can get more financial healing around the world happening. So thanks, everybody. And don't forget, you can also go to my awakenyourwealthbook.com. And uh, I give away my book for free. Um, you just have to pay for your own shipping. So awakenyourwealthbook.com and thanks everybody. And we will see you soon. Bye.